Well, the largest brokers in the country and the National Association of Realtors facing antitrust lawsuits that could shake up the U.S. real estate industry. This comes as real estate deals were canceled at the highest rate in almost a year, according to a new Redfin report. Here with more on the state of real estate is Emily Peck, Axios Markets reporter. Emily, thanks so much for being here. So, of course, as you know, the residential housing market has been, if not at a standstill, troubled, we could call it. And then if you're buying a home, you pay broker's fees. That's what these cases have to do with. So walk us through what uh, is at stake here and what could change. Yeah, so what's at stake is just like you said, it's broker fees. As a home buyer, they're, you're kind of, they're kind of hidden from you, hidden from view. But basically what happens is um, you list a house, you have to offer a fee to the agent representing the buyer, and the fee is usually around five, six percent. Um, and the buyer pays that, and the seller's agent and the buyer's agent split it. In this lawsuit, so there's two class action lawsuits. One is in trial right now, um, and the allegation is these fees are basically a conspiracy between the agents to keep these elevated and to protect their bottom line at the expense of home sellers who are shelling out, you know, the 6% fee. Um, and it's putting buyers and sellers who are supposed to be on opposing sides of the deal, basically on the same side, um, because the buyer's agent benefits when the sale price of the home is higher. And Emily, Emily, with these cases, what are the next dates on the calendar you're watching here? Yeah, so this trial is supposed to be um, wrapping up probably early next month. And then of course, it's going to be appealed. And the other class action will go to trial next year. So those are the big things to watch. And it's really unclear what's going to happen. Though, so far in the case, um, the plaintiff's lawyers have really been, I don't want to say winning, but they've been, they got the class certified. Um, and the judges, someone said to me, it looks like the judge is basically on the plaintiff's side here. They've kind of bought into um, the theory. We'll see if, the, if the, at the end of the day, there's a verdict that buys into the theory. So Emily, at a time when the affordability of the U.S. housing market is, it's tough, is this, how concretely is this going to change what buyers and sellers have to pay in terms of fees? Or what yeah, could, so, I, know I mean, it's not certain yet. Right, it's not certain yet, um, and it's going to take a long time for this to sort of shake out. Um, advocates, there are consumer advocates who have been railing against these fees for no joke, like 10, 15, 20 years, um, and they're hopeful that this will be, if everything goes their way, there'll be a big change, and you can wind up paying lower fees in these transactions that could theoretically bring down home prices. But by the time it shakes out, the I would think or hope that the current real estate market would move beyond its sort of moribund status right now. As you mentioned, there's more deals are falling through. Home affordability is at an all time low, mortgage rates near 8%, and home prices still really elevated. It's just like a terrible housing market right now. And I don't think that a resolution to these cases will come in time to kind of save the day, unfortunately. And Emily, switching gears here a bit, you wrote another piece, which I thought was really interesting, that about 16% of pending home sales fell through in September. You said it was uh, new data from Redfin, Emily. Why is that happening exactly? Is that because people are, you know, they're rethinking it and, and figuring out, you know, actually it turns out I can't afford this house, or is it under, underwriters pulling approval? What is, what is going on there exactly? Yeah, so it's a little bit of both. Basically, these higher rates and rates moved higher just in the past two weeks, as you guys I'm sure know, um, they're making buyers jittery. Um, and so for some, they're pulling out of deals because they just think like, you know what, I, I don't want to pay this high of a, a mortgage rate anymore, even if they can afford it. Others are, um, yeah, they're seeing their underwriting go away. So it's sort of like a little bit of both, but it's like these higher rates have just made things more uncertain and made buyers feel more nervous. And there's Someone even told me that buyers are now more picky. You know, if rates are going up and they're like, you know what, this house isn't exactly perfectly what I want. And since this mortgage payment is going to be so pricey, I'm not going to buy this house. You know, there's just a lot more jitters, uncertainty, um, and that's leading to this higher cancellation rate for these deals. 
And Emily, this when we say 16% of pending home sales fell through in September, did you, is there any historical context on that, Emily? Is that the worst since you know two years, four years? Yeah, it, it was. It um, it's around the same level, 16%, as it was um, when rates first started going up last year. But then before that, um, typically the cancellation rate queues closer to say like 13, 14%. So we have been in this sort of elevated cancellation. Uh, zone vibe um, ever since you know the rate hiking really started in earnest from the Fed. Emily Peck from Exios, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.